Good evening and welcome to our Ash Wednesday service this evening. Do please stay muted during the service. Um, but later in the service, we will be marking ourselves with the sign of the cross in ash. If you are going to be joining in with that at home and you have got some ashes to hand, um, we've been told to tell you, do please use oil rather than water to mix with the ashes as water and ash can apparently irritate people's skin. The words for everything will be uh, on screen, on Zoom, hopefully. Let's begin our service. Brothers and sisters in Christ, since early days, Christians have observed with great devotion the time of our Lord's passion and resurrection and prepared for this by a season of penitence and fasting. By carefully keeping these days, Christians take to heart the call to repentance and the assurance of forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel and so grow in faith and in devotion to our Lord. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the Church, to the observance of a holy Lent, by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and also with you. Let us pray for grace to keep Lent faithfully. Holy God, our lives are laid open before you. Rescue us from the chaos of sin, and through the death of your Son, bring us healing and make us whole. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This evening's reading is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter, uh, chapter 6, starting at verse 1 to 6 and 16 to 18. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret. And your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you.
Well, so far so good, I hope. It's great that uh, you've joined in with us this evening. Thank you for doing so. It's a very strange way to do an Ash Wednesday service, but as needs must, and I'm really pleased that you can be here and join in. Uh, many of you will know already that Lent, for me, is probably one of my least, well, it is actually, the least favorite time of the church, church's year. And I've been thinking about that for this year as well, thinking that actually the whole context of feeling quite miserable, we've had probably enough of as we go through looking towards a better future, having struggled over this last year in so many different ways. And I've often thought that what we need least at the moment is more opportunity to feel sorry or miserable or upset about things. However, there is an opportunity in this Lent, at this season, I think, to think about some good things too and not just feel too bereft or miserable about things as we might often normally associate with this season of Lent. Two things to focus on <clears throat> as we have a few moments to reflect. Firstly, I think, and perhaps this is slightly more challenging uh, in terms of Lent, it's an opportunity to um, have uh, our sense of entitlement challenged. I've been thinking about this recently in relation to uh, the contrast that we've noted in so much global news going on at the moment because of the pandemic, we've become even more aware of the differences between groups of people, individuals, families, cultures, nations, different peoples around the world, and how people are impacted differently by all sorts of circumstance, not just the pandemic, but by weather and by provision of needs for food and shelter. Here in St. Albans and wherever else we're listening in from, we're perhaps quite entitled. Our lives are quite blessed and enriched. And at the worst end of that scale, it can lead us to a real sense of just feeling entitled. We develop a sense of it's my right, it's our right to have what we have and maybe to want more besides. Lent is an opportunity to reflect on this attitude of humility that got brought out in our reading from Matthew's Gospel. Pharisees and those who like to uh, be very much noticed in their religious observances were critiqued by Jesus to his disciples. It's not about show, he was saying. It's not about wanting other people to see that you're entitled and your entitlement enables you to look well off and wealthy and rich and blessed. Your religious observances are more to be done in secret. Don't even know what your left hand and right hand are doing when you're giving to other people. When you pray, don't trumpet it around and make a great show of it, but go privately into a quiet space and pray. And when you fast, don't make yourself look miserable so that people notice that you're doing something worthy, but do it secretly and so people won't know that you're being very religious about things. There's a real challenge, I hear, to the kind of super spirituality and the pride that can so easily come along with our sense of wealth, be it material or wealth spiritual. When we've got so much at our disposal, it's easy to take it for granted and to feel arrogant or proud or over entitled. Lent, then, point one, invites us to reflect on when at times we feel over entitled and rather than instead of choosing that path to feel a bit more humble about things, to acknowledge God's goodness, to ask for a spirit of humility which is at the heart of this season of Lent. Secondly, and it's my antidote for feeling too miserable about this season and this time of Lent, is to think about gratitude. I think Lent invites us to be grateful for when we give, when we pray, when we give things up, when we look at what we can do in a positive sense, then it's really good to be grateful. We can do so much and we need to be thankful for all that we can do and how we reflect on things in life that make our life so good. Be grateful. I've set myself the challenge, I think, throughout Lent this year uh, of just being more grateful, of remembering to say thank you to people more. Remember to acknowledge with gratitude the ways that my life has been enriched and enhanced by those around me. For all the good things that I enjoy too, to say thank you to God 
more than I say please to God. So maybe for you too, you might like to think about gratitude in this Lent, a two-pronged approach. Let's think about humility and the need not to get swept along in a tide of pride or arrogance or over-entitlement, and also to develop a culture of gratitude. Choose a discipline this Lent, maybe. Join with me in perhaps looking for daily opportunities to say thank you and to be grateful. And maybe choose a discipline that helps you to be aware of the needs of others as well. Make some time to pray each day. Maybe join us in our morning prayer times at 9 o'clock each morning. Or choose a time that suits you to pray quietly each day during Lent. Join us for our Sunday worship and maybe for the home group studies, the Lent group course that we're running too. Find an opportunity to build in a bit of structure and discipline to your reflection through this season of Lent. And as we do so, may we cultivate that attitude of gratitude, of generosity, acknowledging God's kindness and goodness and generosity towards us and saying thank you to God and to those around us. Amen. Let us now call to mind our sin and the infinite mercy of God. God the Father, have mercy upon us. God the Son, have mercy upon us. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy upon us. Holy, blessed and glorious Trinity, have mercy upon us. From all evil and mischief, from pride, vanity, and hypocrisy, from envy, hatred, and malice, and from all evil intent, good Lord, deliver us. From sloth, worldliness, and love of money, from hardness of heart, and contempt for your word and your laws, good Lord, deliver us. From sins of body and mind, from the deceits of the world, the flesh, and the devil. Good Lord, deliver us. In all times of sorrow, in all times of joy, in the hour of death, and at the day of judgment, good Lord, deliver us. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your birth, childhood, and obedience, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, Good Lord, deliver us. By your ministry in word and work, by your mighty acts of power, and by your preaching of the kingdom, good Lord, deliver us. By your agony and trial, by your cross and passion, and by your precious death and burial, good Lord, deliver us. By your mighty resurrection, by your glorious ascension, and by your sending of the Holy Spirit, good Lord, deliver us. Give us true repentance. Forgive us our sins of negligence and ignorance and our deliberate sins. And grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit to amend our lives according to your holy word. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. Make our hearts clean, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. And we say together, Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation.
Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We come now to the imposition of ashes. And hopefully that uh, you've got some ashes if you want to join in with this part of the service. You may have collected some from church or had some dropped off to you. And um, if you haven't, you might have made some yourself. Or if you haven't got anything and you want to use something to join in with, there is the option, there is the option of uh, just having a, a match that's been struck. And the blackened end of it, if you rub that on your fingers uh, with a bit of oil as well, then that will make a smudge and a mark on your forehead if you'd like to use that. Don't strike the match and then use it on your fingers straight away. Safety warning. Wait till it's cooled down just in case. But there's an option if you don't have anything else to hand that might work. And as we've been saying in our instructions, use a little bit of oil. And then we're ready for this prayer. So if you'd like to place your hands over your ashes at home or whatever you're using, and uh, this prayer is said. God our Father, you create us from the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be for us a sign of our penitence and a symbol of our mortality. For it is by your grace alone that we receive eternal life in Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. And with these words, feel free to make the sign of the cross on your forehead. Uh, we'll say these words as you want to say them to yourself or together at home. I'll just preface this with this introduction. As a sign of the spirit of penitence with which we shall keep this season of preparation for Easter, I invite you to receive on your head in ash the sign of the cross, the symbol of our salvation. God, our Father, grant me your grace to repent and believe in the gospel. Amen. We pause for a moment of quiet to reflect whilst the organ plays.
The Lord enrich you with his grace and nourish you with his blessing. The Lord defend you in trouble and keep you from evil. The Lord accept your prayers and absolve you from your offences. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We pray to the Lord for courage this Lent. Give your church the courage to give up her preoccupation with herself and to give more time to your mission in the world. May the blood and water flowing from the side of Jesus bring forgiveness to your people and help us to face the cost of proclaiming salvation. Lord, meet us in the silence. Give us strength and hear our prayer. Give your world the courage to give up war, bitterness and hatred and to seek peace. May the shoulders of the risen Jesus, once scourged by soldiers, bear the burden of political and military conflict in our world. Lord, meet us in the silence. Give us strength and hear our prayer. Give us the courage to give up quarrels, strife and jealousy in our families, neighbourhoods and communities. May the presence of the risen Jesus, his body once broken and now made whole, bring peace and direction as we live with one another. Lord, meet us in the silence. Give us strength and hear our prayer. Give us the courage to give up our selfishness as we live for others and to give time, care and comfort to the sick. May the wounded hands of Jesus bring his healing touch and the light of his presence fill their rooms. Lord, meet us in the silence. Give us strength and hear our prayer. Give us the courage to give up our fear of death and to rejoice with those who have died in faith. May the feet of the risen Lord Jesus, once nailed to the cross, walk alongside the dying and bereaved in their agony, and walk with us and all your church through death to the gate of glory. 
Lord, meet us in the silence. Give us strength and hear our prayer, here and in eternity. Amen. our closing prayer and blessing. Lord our God, grant us grace to desire you with our whole heart, that so desiring we may seek and find you, and so finding may love you, and so loving may hate those sins from which you have delivered us, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. <laughs>